Hey, what's going on guys? So a lot of times people get confused when they try to figure out when an officer should use force against somebody. Now today I'm gonna do something a little different. I'm gonna show you two separate videos and I'm gonna do it because I wanna make a comparison. In the first video, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you an officer that uses controlling force to take a person into custody as that person, as a suspect that he's dealing with steps up in that officer's face. Let's go ahead and take a look at that video right now. I'm finna dip. Okay. I have no reason You're to be detained by you, bro. Sit down. Bro, stop. Sit down. Bro, you see your mouth. Sit down, dude. For real. For real. Now, the reason I show you that video is because this actually, uh, this officer took a lot of heat when it actually all happened. The reason he took a lot of heat is because people were asking, why did that officer have to use force? Now, after doing my research on the investigation, the officer had a lawful reason to detain this individual. And when that person stood up in that officer's face, that officer perceived that as a threat and therefore he utilized controlling force to take him into custody. Now I'm gonna show you another video and what this video is gonna show you is an officer that's dealing with the subject in the field and uh, as he's dealing with this person, he kind of catches the officer off guard. Let's go, let's go ahead and take a look and see what I'm talking about. Hey, oh, shit. Ooh. Oh, 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 Now that we've watched that video, you can see that the suspect that the officer was dealing with was taking a fighting stance against or towards that officer, but it was so quick that he followed up with a punch to that officer's face and actually caught him off guard. He sucker punched him. And not only once he makes contact with that officer, the officer stumbles because you can tell he's probably a little bit dazed. And so now what that means is the officer is behind the eight ball when it comes to trying to detain, detain this person and take him into custody. As a matter of fact, I think this person is able to run a little ways away before they're actually able to successfully get him. So why do I bring up these two different videos? Well, the reason I bring them up is simply because of this. An officer doesn't need to wait for somebody to throw a punch at an officer or get physical with him before they decide to utilize force to take them into custody. As long as an officer has reasonable cause to believe that a, a crime is occurring, is about to occur or has occurred, and if that person is looking like they want to start, you know, being combative with the officer, now that officer can go ahead and utilize force to take them into custody. An officer should not have to wait for somebody to punch them in the face. An officer should not have to wait for a person to rush them or try to tackle them before they respond and utilize force to take them into custody. That's why when an officer dictates or articulates in a report uh, saying, hey, look, that person took a fighting stance, they were challenging me, they were utilizing coarse words or whatever it is, that lends to the officer's training and experience to know that a fight is about to come on. I'll leave you with this. Prior to law enforcement, I was involved in a couple fights throughout my life. And in every single one of those fights, I knew it was coming. It wasn't one of those where, you know, I got caught or sucker punched. The person that I was getting involved or getting into it with, I can see they were taking a fighting stance. I can see that they were utilizing coarse words. I, I can see that they were puffing their chest or getting eye to eye or nose to nose. All signs that led me to believe that this person wanted to fight me or they were getting ready to sucker punch me. And because I knew those things, it allowed me to be on my guard and take a defensive posture or be able to, you know, deliver a strike so that way I don't get sucker punched and get knocked out. Well, it's the same thing that happens to an officer when we're in the field. If we start seeing some of those signs start to occur while we're actually enforcing our job that somebody's trying to hurt us or fight us, then we now have the ability, as long as we have a reason to detain them or to take them into custody, we have the ability to utilize reasonable force. And understand I say reasonable force, not excessive force, reasonable force to take them into custody. So I hope you guys understand the dynamic between these two situations and why the officer in the first video decided to, you know, take utilize controlling force to take him into custody so that way he can avoid what happened in the second video. Thanks again and God bless.